Hi, I'm Phil. Welcome to Holy Habitus. And today I'd like to pick up the Sermon on the Mount from where we left it before Christmas at the end of the Beatitudes. And we're picking up in verse 13 where it has this lovely passage about Christian disciples being salt and light in society. Um, Jesus said this, You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by people. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its lampstand and uh, where it can give light to everybody in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before people that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. You know, it's a great passage, isn't it? And it sets a tone for chapter 5, which is all about the visible life of discipleship. Chapter 6 goes on to talk about the acts of righteousness that should be kept hidden actually the giving to the poor the prayer the fasting these are religious acts which Jesus said just keep that between you and God don't do what the Pharisees do and parade it but there are things about discipleship that should be visible and that's what Jesus is talking about in chapter 5 and he sets the tone for that in in this talk teaching about salt and light it should be something that shines that people see these good deeds and give glory to God because of them and they're great images, aren't they? Salt in those days was a preservative. It stopped things from going off. It kept food fresh and tasty because it was a, a taste enhancer. It was flavoursome. And Christians are called to be that kind of presence in society that so stop communities from rotting or decomposing in, into immorality and, uh, and unhealthy patterns. Instead, they're called to be a preservative and add flavour. And light, they're called to be light and shine in dark places and bring warmth and energy and hope into difficult circumstances. And wouldn't it be great if Christians were doing more of that? that our workplaces uh, were transformed by our presence, that managers will say, oh, I love having Christians as my employees because, do you know what? They just lift the team morale. They are positive, reliable, honest, trustworthy. They work hard. They don't steal. They're just good news in my company. Wouldn't it be great in our families if people said, oh, I like so-and-so because um, they're the relative who's always fun and they, they're always uh, committed and they're always dependable and they're always um, making peace and seeking reconciliation and bringing life to our family. And do you know what? They're a Christian. Wouldn't it be great if our social groups and our communities valued the uh, kind of input of Christians because they just brought light into situations of darkness? Wouldn't that be fabulous? Wouldn't it be great? And when that happens, of course, that's one of the best advertisements for the gospel that there is pays tribute to the God who is good and the Saviour who is love. So the question this week is how can we be saltier, how can we shine all the more brightly?